everyone, this is MTR Custom Leather and I want to do a quick how-to video today discussing a popular question that a lot of um, you guys have either emailed or called about and that question is, how can I possibly stretch my MTR thumb brake holster? It's a half an inch off, up to three quarters inch, maybe even one inch um, too short and meaning that the thumb brake can be either quarter inch two and a half an inch, maybe an inch too short. First of all, let's discuss um, the problem, why, and a solution. Keep it really simple. So first of all, you need to know a little bit about leather, um, FYI, so you can get an idea of why your thumb brake may be too short. Um, MTR Custom Leathers, holsters, leather products, belts, anything that you receive us, we use only the top premium grade A material and I'm discussing um, the bullhide leather. So if you've got exotic leather that we offer or horsehide, then that is a little bit different. You can use the same techniques that I'm going over today, but a little bit about the leather, I'm going to talk more about the bullhide. Um, so our technique um, we're molding, it is called a wet molding process or technique and it's very accurate to Pacific Firearms. Um, we don't use any universal so that's why every holster is made to order depending on the options that you choose. Um, so when you receive your leather product, for example a holster from MTR, it may appear to fit close fitting at first um, or too tight, um, which is good. Um, but this is by design. MTR engineers our projects to fit snug knowing that the leather filaments will relax and give a proper fit with use. Um, and with use that means how often you're going to use it. Whether it may be a week to a few days to even a few hours you can break this in pretty easy. Uh, me being very small petite woman can still break in this holster and it's very um, about a half an inch off. So if I can do it anyone can do it. Um, what you need first of all would be your holster, you'll need your weapon, and today I'm using a mold weapon just to show you this is what we use an idea um, for our molding process. It is not the real gun, it is a fake gun. However, when you are using your real weapon, make sure that it's unloaded and you're using all safety precautions, keeping the barrel pointed away from you and not putting your hand on the trigger. So my weapon is not loaded. Mag, not loaded. Um, next thing you would need um, would be the bag that your holster came in. So we specifically put our holsters and items in plastic bags. Um, so you can actually use the plastic bag to do the break-in. Now our break-in instructions on holsters and thumb brakes is on the back of your thank you letter that we give to you. However, for some reason you don't see it, you forget it, um, or lose it, we shoot us an email, we can send you another copy. Or you can go on our MCR Custom Leather blog page, which is really awesome, and you'll find out a lot about leather, weapon news, weapon rights, women topics, about our products, leather break-in, um, and a whole bunch of other useful information dealing with our products. So to get started, first of all, um, I told you I want to tell you a little bit about leather. So leather filaments, um, you cannot physically see them with the eye, it's more of a microscopic, they're going to be tight. So with that being said, um, when we make the leather holsters, we use natural rawhide leather and it's a wet molding process, like I said, and we use about 20 tons of pressure to capture the exact contour and shape, all the serrations of your weapon. Or, for example, this holster has a light and laser attachment on it, which um, requires a little bit more, or a little bit different technique. Um, so, by the time we wet mold your process of the holster, naturally for the leather to shrink a little bit, and when you receive your holster, the fitment will be tight, and the strap will be too short. Um, that's going to be natural and it's good because leather is like boots and a glove. It's going to be very tight at first. It may be uncomfortable at first, but the more you use it, it will stretch to fit your gun. So within six months to a year, your gun is not going to be falling out of an MTR holster. Um, it may other holsters, but not ours because we make them tighter and that is the reason why. So the method I'm going to be talking about today um, is just a very simple method of breaking in the holster. You don't need a lot. Like I said, you just need this right here and your fingers. Um, now, to use your bag, it's 
They call it a blocking method. You just use a plastic bag. You can use other techniques. I've seen people use wax paper. Um, people have used oil and other soluble um, liquids. But we're keeping it simple. Um, you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff to break in your holster. We don't want you to do that. So it's a really simple process what you need to do. Um, you can take off this top card and use the bag that came with. I'm not going to mess this new bag up. Um, but I do have another bag. So what you need to do, again, like I said, number one, place your firearm, um, unload it, check all your safeties, use your safety precautions, you know, not finger on the trigger, gun away from you, and then you're going to hold the firearm in the grip with your dominant hand, and then you're going to wrap the plastic bag around the weapon. Now, I, some people will put the whole um, weapon in the bag. For me, it's just too slick and not very stable, so I like to, again, keep it only around the gun like that. And then the next thing is, you want to prepare the strap by stretching the strap. Um, so set this to the side. What you can do is, um, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult than a regular holster, meaning that this holster is lined, so it is double the thickness, which is double the retention, and a little bit more tighter fit, and you have more serrations of the weapon in it, so it's going to be a tighter fit. Um, so with this one, I'm going to take an edge of a desk or a table, and you're just going to simply pull the strap back and forth around here. Now, I don't want you to bend it back negative. Don't do that. Um, don't bend it really crazy mashing it. You don't want to etch the um, leather. You don't want to crease it or wrinkle it that way. You just want to do a nice contour shape as to the gun on the edge of the table. Go back and forth pulling with all your strength and pushing downward to break in the filaments of the leather. Um, once you do that, then you can take your weapon with the plastic bag and you're going to, as you're inserting it, you're going to pull on this strap. Now for me, I'm going to pull and pull. Now it's still going to be tight, but you're going to keep pulling. Again, keep the weapon away from you. Keep a good firm grip on here and keep a pulling. And what you can do is wrap it on around. It's still going to be tight and you're gonna mash it close. Now, you can take and leave this in here. You can twist it around 90 degrees, back and forth, clockwise. However you want to, you can even try to pull the gun out. So that way, it will stretch that strap. Keep a pulling as much as you can. Um, next, you're gonna leave the uh, weapon in the plastic bag, in the holster, doing nothing, or if you're sitting on the couch, you can keep playing with it as long as you want to, but leave it in here for a while. Um, it could be overnight, it could be 45 minutes an hour, but leave it in there so this extra material of the bag will help stretch out the holster. Now, let's say after 45 minutes an hour, or maybe an overnight, you take it out, and let's say it's still a little too snug for you, um, you want it more loose, then what I recommend, um, you can take the plastic bag and use another bag. And you can use as many layers as you want, depending on how you want your retention of your holster to be. So once you take this, put it in there, it's gonna be a little tight now. I'm not even for sure if we can get this. And you can see it is off. This is not off that much um, with the double bag. So it's gonna, it's, about three quarters of an inch, give or take. Um, you can press the weapon down in there to try to get it fully seated again. Once you get it in there and get it snapped and secure, twist it around, pull the weapon to stretch that out. Again, leave it. Um, you can repeat these steps over and over until you get that fitment that you want. Let's say um, you don't have a lot of time to do this. Maybe you're in a hurry. Maybe it's a competition. Um, you gotta have the holster right away for fast use. So what I recommend is you can get some Phoebe and Shoe Stretch It. Um, you can get this right off our website. It comes in a four ounce bottle. It is a um, silicon based um, lubricant. 
Um, so it's not going to damage your gun or the holster, but what you can do is um, put this in the inside of your holster and then you can put your gun in the holster and it will help stretch it out faster. Now with us, um, the major pressure points of the holster, which would be the tightest part and the friction points, it's going to be around the trigger guard and then around the ejection port. Those, because they're like the deepest serrations of the weapon. So those areas you really want to touch up quite a bit with that shoe stretch head to help um, increase the smoothness and the draw of that. I do not recommend using no oils like meek oils um, or um, really thick oils that's going to soften the leather because it'll start to lose its detail and become more supple and um, it'll become too soft. So you don't want to use that. You just want to naturally break in the holster. Keep in mind, this is a skin of a cow. It will stretch. It's just like our skin on our body is going to stretch, unfortunately. Um, but keep in mind to use small amounts of this. Um, so, let's say it's been 45 minutes. We're going to take it out. Take out the plastic bag. And now we're going to insert it into it. And looky there snaps right away one hand um, you got full coverage now of the weapon and the more you use this it would be a lot easier so I can do it pretty much with one thumb put that right over press now there's something I want to tell you about with our thumb brakes we don't use any cheap thumb brakes so ours will have a little metal reinforced tab right here at the top these are called military directional snaps. So you need to snap it from the bottom at an angle and rock on. That's how it's gonna go. You cannot snap this on flat and you cannot go from the top to the bottom. You really need to go from the bottom and up. Um, now my holster is fitting perfect and we don't have to worry about it being too tight and keep in mind this was like almost an inch off and we did it here in a few minutes um the trigger was exposed that's how much it was off and this one's one of the hardest holsters to break in due to it having a late light and laser it's a larger weapon with deeper serrations and it was also lined making this a little bit harder to stretch because it's a double layer also with an upgraded of uh, the red stitching our nylon stitch so it will not dry rot or tear easy it's very thick durable um, so that is our leather break-in now follow the steps that I've given you um, to the ideal break-in long service life and proper fitment that will last many years It's common for the inside of leather to scratch while doing these process um, that's known as an etching smooth leather lined holsters will be even more subject to this normal occurrence after the initial etching of the holster, whether it be on the side, if you've got suppressor sites, higher aftermarket sites, even a third barrel, um, it will, you know, quit etching. It's just the initial etch and that will break in the holster to your real Pacific firearm. When testing out our MTR leather products for proper fitment, never place a low firearm in a holster without first testing it. Should any MTR process um, products become worn, loose, broken, defective, or ill-fitting, in or in your opinion unsafe cease um, use immediately because the leather will stretch it will give and it will wear now also to keep in mind we got some <clears throat> awesome new MTR hats with real top grain leather emboss on there you can pick several different colors styles of hats and then we will put these logos around the front of the sticky pins our new product that we just came out with and that we make here these are a Richardson brand hat great awesome hat they are snapback they are adjustable they're comfy they're great for the summer they breathe very easy um, you can contour very nice so check us out at mtrcustomleather.com for all your holster needs and again for more information for break-in check out our blog page thanks and y'all have a wonderful day Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned to the next video.